Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Retired cop found dead, believed to have committed suicide. A retired policeman is believed to have committed suicide at his home in Wellington Heights, St. Andrew, on Tuesday afternoon. He has been identified as Lloyd Anthony Wilson, otherwise called Willow, and Patrick Gray, a deputy superintendent of police. Information reaching reports us is that Wilson was at home with several family members when they heard an explosion in the upstairs bedroom. The police were summoned and on their arrival, found the door to the bedroom lock. The door was kicked off and the officers entered the room and went through the closet into the bathroom where they found Wilson clad in a grey t-shirt and blue underwear with what appeared to be a gunshot wound to the center of the forehead. It is understood that he was in a sitting position on the floor near the toilet. A firearm was on the floor to his left side in a pool of blood and one spent casing was found in the bathroom. Woman beta in viral video reportedly blames frustration reveals suicidal thoughts. The man who was captured last week in a viral video viciously kicking the mother of his children outside the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court reportedly told her afterwards that he acted out of frustration and that he felt like killing himself. Javon Stevenson, while leaving the courthouse last Wednesday after his previous assault case against a complainant, was mentioned, was caught on camera kicking the woman repeatedly as she laid on the ground and hurled an expletive at her before fleeing the era. He was captured and charged on Friday, brought before the court and was ultimately ordered to pay $250,000 restitution. On Tuesday, when the court mentioned the original assault case against him, the complainant was seen nursing wounded fingers, covered with bandages, with a cylinder to support. While explaining the ordeal she went through last Wednesday, when Stevenson assaulted her, the complainant said she is now unable to care for her children. Turning her attention to the accused, Senior Paris Judge Lorian Cole Montague told him, You are look for one long, long stretch, adding that his behavior is shameful. Turning her attention back to the complainant, Cole Montague asked her, if Stevenson had attempted to interfere with her since the incident, to which she revealed that following the attack on Wednesday, Stevenson called her and said he did it out of frustration. Additionally, she said he told her on Friday that he felt like killing himself. With two assault cases against him, Stevenson was remanded and ordered to return to court on March 30 when both matters will be mentioned. I have never borrowed from SSL. Prime Minister Andrew Holness say he is no longer a client of Stocks and Security Limited SSL, having closed his account at the institution in 2021 and has never borrowed money from the fraud hit brokerage firm. I have no funds currently with SSL and I have not done any business with SSL since September 2021. I wish to also make it clear that neither I nor any family member have ever borrowed from SSL or received any form of credit facility from SSL Holness said in a statement on Tuesday afternoon. Holness' declaration comes amid the ongoing investigation into the multi-billion dollar fraud at SSL, which has garnered international attention. He said he had opened the account with SSL in 2008 and closed it in September 2021. In September 2021, I liquidated the last remaining financial instruments management by SSL on my behalf and gave instructions for my account to be closed. I have no funds currently with SSL and I have never done any business with SSL since September 2021, the Prime Minister stated. The Prime Minister said, in line with government's commitment to the transparency into the probe, he has asked all cabinet ministers to check and disclose the status of any accounts or investment relationships their ministries or agencies may have with SSL. These current allegations of fraud at SSL and the international attention it has drawn to our financial sector requires a commitment to the highest level of transparency, probability, and accountability wholeness stated. The public must be assured that the political class has no conflict of interest that would prevent, delay, or dilute efforts to ensure that the truth of the allegations is uncovered. Those responsible are held to account and the victims receive justice. Retired track superstar Usain Bolt is among at least 30 people impacted by the still unfolding fraud which has been investigated by the Police Fraud Squad and the Financial Investigations Division. Attorneys representing the Olympian have indicated that US $12.7 million, or nearly $2 billion, has been fleeced from Bolt's account. They have given the management of SSL until January 27, 
to pay over the stated sum or face legal action. Former MP Ian Hills while preferred to police over Hanover building bridges. Former Member of Parliament for Hanover Western Ian Hills and his wife, Charlotte Alexander Hills, have been referred to the Commissioner of Police by the former Office of the Contractor General OCG for further investigations. Specifically, the OCG has asked the Commissioner to determine whether Hayes and his wife committed forgery in relation to buildings that were constructed in Hanover without the approval of the Hanover Parish Council HPC and whether Hayes, the former People's National Party MP, breached the Corruption Prevention Act. This is in relation to allegations that Hayes pressured and then the Mayor of Lucy, Janet Harton, in his bid to get her to approve documents for his illegal constructions. The long-awaited report of the OCG, which has since been subsumed by the Integrity Commission, was tabled in the Parliament on Tuesday. The contents within it, 232 pages, are as explosive as they are damning. The special report which looked into allegations of conflict of interest, irregularities, and or inappropriate of relation to the construction of building by his, a former Minister of State in the Ministry of Water, Land Environment and Climate Change, commenced on April 24, 2015. Among the allegations that sparked the investigations are that family members of Hales, namely his wife and her daughter, Keisha Gail Alexander, and his mother, Pauline Gray, operate the company Just One Service, which undertook the development of a plaza in Orange Bay, Hanover, without approval. The allegation further stated that Hales and his family members constructed a plaza at Orange Bay Square in Hanover, with documents submitted to the Hanover Parish Council for another place, which is Mount Pleasant in Santoy. The former mayor alleged that, sometime between January or February of 2014, he has called me on the office phone at my office at the Hanover Parish Council and said he had some documents at the Hanover Parish Council and he wanted me to grant him a favor. He asked me to sign and stamp the documents. I asked what documents they were and he informed me that there were documents for his land and plaza in Hanover. Mr. Michael Grant, the spouse of Miss Horton, alleged that an hour before January 2014, he has telephoned him and stated that he had requested that Miss Horton sign certain documents, which she refused to sign, and that she cannot stay there as a mayor because she is not working with me. He has alleged Judith McKenzie Lawrence, the former secretary manager HPC, promised to grant any request for approval made by him on the premise that he arranges for her to be transferred from the HPC to a council closer to home. Charlotte Alexander alleged that sometime in June of 2013, Mackenzie Lawrence advised her, by way of telephone conversation, that the building applications for Cousins Cove were approved and she just needed to sign off on the paperwork. Mackenzie Lawrence alleged that, subsequent to serving the stop notice on Cousins Cove, he has called her on her office telephone and stated, that she was targeting him. Based upon the sworn responses provided to the OCG, as well as the documentary evidence submitted before the course of the hearing, the OCG arrived at several conclusions, including the following. The developers of the Just One Plaza initially applied to the HPC for the construction of nine shops and a supermarket. A total of 20 shops and a supermarket were constructed. The Just One Plaza was constructed in the absence of a planning and building permit from the HPC and in wanton disregard for the seize work, stop and enforcement notice which were served thereupon. The OCG noted that the proprietors of the Just One Plaza, Breach A, Section 3 of the Paris Council Act and Bylaws 1952, by undertaking construction of the plaza without the approval of the HPC, and B, Section 24.3 of the Town and Planning Act, by continuing the construction of the plaza to the point of completion, subsequent to the enforcement notice being served. Notwithstanding the option which is available to the HPC to issue as, as built permit, the OCG concluded that the HPC should also consider the enforcement of the punitive sanctions which are prescribed under Section 4 of the Paris Council Building Act and Sections 23 and 24.3 of the Town and Country Planning Act against the developers and our owners of the Just One Plaza. The OCG also considers this failure on the part of the responsibility and accountability officers of the HPC to be tantamount to the eviction of duties. OCG also concluded that the sketch plan of the Cousins Cove Lot 23 and 24, which were submitted to the HPC in furtherance of the application for building and planning permission for the resort, another development undertaken by Hills, is a forged document. 
the OCG's premise is based upon the fact that Andrew Bromfield, who is represented on the face of the same sketch plan as the surveyor, has denied repairing that reference document. In point of fact, Mr. Bromfield has unequivocally stated that the signature which appeared on the document is clearly not my signature. It was further explained by Mr. Bromfield that the logo which appeared on the reference document was no longer in use by his company as at the date which was reflected on the subject sketch plan. The OCG report notes that Section 3.1 of the Forgery Act 1942 states that forgery is the making of a false document in order that it may be used as genuine. Hayes had fought for several years to prevent the OCG report from going public. However, in December last year, the Supreme Court dismissed his application for leave to apply for judicial review regarding the release of the 2017 report by the Zen OCG. That ruling paved the way for the release of the report on Tuesday. He is going to a PMP Vice President. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and